good day traders, Chris Weston here, head of research at Pepperstone. Very interesting structure to financial markets at the moment. You know, there's definitely some big opportunities to, to be seen. I want to take a step uh, and firstly look at what's happening in the S&P, the, the, you know, the, the epicenter of global equity markets. If you have a look at what's happening there, you saw last week that bearish outside week reversal, so price making a higher high from the previous week. Uh, the bears wrestled back control and saw price close firmly below the previous week's low. Um, what you want to see in that situation is real confirmation that the bears have got uh, you know, a lot more dominance in, in, that, in that price action structure. And that hasn't happened. If you actually look at the S&P on a, on a 10 or a 5 minute chart, you can see as soon as the market gapped higher, we didn't see any retracement at all. The bulls came straight back in and continued to bid up stocks and a, a very bullish tape coming through in the S&P cash session. Pretty much all sectors ending higher. Volumes were a little bit light, but certainly great breadth playing through as well. In fact, the Nasdaq did very nicely up over 2%. And I think of the, the fact that the European equity markets caught a nice bid on the, the open of the US cash market gave us that little bit extra clarity that we wanted to bid up stocks from that situation. So one day doesn't make a trend, but certainly it goes some way to negating last week's bearish outside week reversal, which if you have a look back in October, when we saw a similar price action on a weekly chart, you can see that that was actually the, the catalyst for you know, the 18, 19% decline in the S&P. So definitely a bullish session playing through. The fact that oil prices were up you know, nicely as well is a reflection, not just because the Saudis have come to the party yet again uh, to look at their supply issues, but the fact is if we can see a break of this sort of 57, 88, 58 um, supply level, then that would be very, very bullish and actually probably give risk assets that little bit more extra as well. And what we're seeing today on the open of the Australian market is another a bullish situation where the market's opening 40 points higher at the moment. Whether we can hold those levels is something that we'll be watching very closely. But certainly the US data flow um, was very much noted. I mean, there was plenty of negative data flow if we go through yesterday's session. You know, career exports were, were all full. Japanese factory orders and, 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 and Chinese car sales were, were certainly very low. But the fact is that the market took in what was a very strong uh, retail sales number in the US in terms of that control group over 1%. Now, what I was a bit concerned about, uh, despite this very strong tape in the equity market, and also if you look at high yield um, relative to investment grade spreads, they came in nine basis points. So really strong outperformance from high yield uh, credit. So that's obviously a very strong positive. But if you look at the rates market, it didn't respond at all. Despite what we saw from the positive tape in equities, credit working, despite what we saw in the positive data in the US and the improvement to some of these uh, central bank now cast models, um, you know, we're still seeing 18 basis points of cuts being priced into the euro dollar curve for 2020. It doesn't scream that people are seeing an improvement there and they're yet to be convinced. Um, if you have a look at the bond market, you can still see 10s at uh, 263. And again, you know, that doesn't show that people are generally con concerned about uh, long-term inflation expectations playing through. And we'll have to look at what's happening in tonight's US CPI number. If that can come out hotter on, on core uh, above 2.2%, maybe you'll see a little bit of selling in the, in the curve and, and that will be interesting to watch there. But certainly the rates in the bond market hasn't shown the same message that we've seen from the equity market at all. Now, in terms of currency markets, we're very much focused on the pound. It's all pound, pound, pound at the moment. That's exactly what we're seeing. Implied vols that we're seeing in, in euro sterling or cable, you know, are elevated at the moment. And that's a reflection that not only have we seen a big move, but we're expecting to see further big moves playing through. Um, the fact that we've seen legal changes to the backstop uh, from Jean-Claude Juncker and Michel Barnier in the EU27 is definitely a massive step forward in the negotiation process. Um, but the fact that we've seen cable sellers coming into 133, we've seen euro um, buyers coming against the pound, suggests that people suggest, see, still see tomorrow's vote as a low ball probability. There's still too many question marks. OK, Jeffrey Cox, the Attorney General, could um, rubber stamp this and... and you know, throw some legal weight to this and give us some more clarity. Um, but the ERG party at this stage are looking very unconvinced uh, about the changes. There's no clarity about the timeline and there's still too many question marks, even though it's definitely a step in the right direction. And obviously we've seen Cable and Sterling respond quite favourably to this. But if you have a look at the structure of the last vote that we saw back in January, where we saw 118 uh, Tory MPs voting against the own government, what we want to see tomorrow, if it does fail, which we and the way that the pound's traded is, is that it's probably likely to fail still, um, is that, you know, have we shown genuine momentum towards, uh, you know, towards the, Theresa May's plan? We know they're not going to get a second. This is as good as it gets the, um, in, from, from Jean-Claude Juncker and the concessions that they've made. Um, but what we now need to see is if this does fail, which is highly likely, as I say, 
um, is whether or not we show real momentum towards Tory MPs to vote this through. How did, how did the DUP party vote? How many ERG members are going to vote for Theresa May's plan? How many total in, in total Tory members are we, and, we, and are we going to show real momentum towards that situation? If that's the case, then what you could see in, on Friday morning's vote for us here in Australia on extending Article 50 is that you could say that perhaps we'll get a third vote playing through. Um, so certainly something to focus on and if we don't see any kind of momentum playing through in tomorrow's vote, then people will ramp up the prospect of a second referendum, potentially a general election playing through. Um, but certainly cable vol still very elevated in this situation. As I say, the market doesn't expect this to pass. Um, we could be surprised, of course, in which case cable will probably be closer to 135, 136 in that situation. But what we want to see is real momentum in the voting. 118 Victoria MPs voted against the government last time. Will we see dramatic improvement for that to give them hope that perhaps further down the line, if we see a third vote after an extended Article 50, that we can go. If we don't see any material improvement, that will obviously be a pound negative.